Unbeaten college football teams are becoming as rare as green leaves in autumn. Last Saturday, five in the Pac-10. This Saturday, just three remain. In Pasadena, UCLA Bruins showed their might laying the first loss on the Washington Huskies. Running back Deshaun Foster set a school rushing record with 301 yards. The Washington State Cougars wore down the Stanford Cardinal, ending Stanford a first loss, and the Cougars joined the top 25 ranking. Stanford is in tough again this week, trying to stay in the conference title hunt against the Oregon Ducks in Eugene. And as you look at the current standings, it's important to know that Oregon does not play Washington this year. But the Ducks do go to Pullman against Washington State next week. In today's schedule in the Pac-10, the game here would seem the most vital. UCLA at home with winless California. Washington State beat Montana State in a makeup game on Thursday night. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and welcome to College Football again on ABC Sports. We've heard sports announcers all of our lives ranting about teams controlling their own destiny. Well, the top three in the Pac-10 do that because it's this simple. Win out, and uh, you win them all. Perhaps even a chance, Tim Brandt, to go to the big one on January 3rd. Well, I know these Oregon Ducks are thinking about that, Keith. As a matter of fact, the coaches told them this week if they can go to 7-0 and today, that's the best start here since 1933, and they would join the best of the best. And we're going to be watching a couple of really good trigger guys today at quarterback. Yeah, that's absolutely correct, and they're very much alike. They're big, strong quarterbacks. Joey Harrington had a lot of pressure on him early. They called him Joey Heisman. Right now, he's only fourth in this conference in passing efficiency. Eh, not that great? Well, he's a winner. I'll tell you that, a pocket passer. Today, he just has to be patient, use all his weapons, and he'll be fine. On the other side of the line of scrimmage, Randy Fosani of Stanford is an outstanding quarterback. Same size, good passer, but he adds the element of run, escapability. That could cause some problems today for the Oregon defense. And I want to remind everybody this. Six of the last seven champions in this conference started seniors at quarterback. These two are seniors. Right. The Pac-10 could have used a couple of Nash units this week, particularly for the defensive people, because a lot of hurt going on around the conference. Here's Todd Harris with that story. Well, Keith and Tim, everyone has injuries by the middle of October, but these two teams have been hit particularly hard, especially on the defensive side. So if you're the Cardinal offense looking for a vulnerable spot on the Oregon D, look no further than the secondary. Leading tackler safety Keith Lewis is questionable with an ankle injury. Right corner Steve Smith missed practice all week with a knee injury. And as bad as that sounds, it may be worse for Stanford. Their injuries are centered around the front seven. The Cardinal come to Austin Stadium without the services of their sack leader, tackle Matt Leonard. Gabriel, Freeman, Friedrichs, Wire, and Carter also hurt, but they will play. Now each team's defense will have to rely on some untested names, and they can also use the help of their respective offensive units to help keep them off the field. Keith. All right, Todd, thanks very much. Stanford has won the toss, and they will take the football. So we'll see the Cardinal on offense first with Ryan Wells, who's uh, he's tender, and Brian Allen, a tailback, uh, returning the kick. And it's Siegel, Jared Siegel, kicking it off for the Oregon Ducks. Those uniforms are forbidding even in the daylight. And we're on at Eugene. Brian Allen from the one yard line. And taken down short of the 15. Downfield coverage very strong for the Speedy Ducks. And uh, they stop him short of the 15 yard line. The starting lineup for the Stanford Cardinals, quarterback Randy Fasani, the mover of the offense, responsible for 18 points a game and 12 touchdowns so far this season. He is a gunslinger. He sometimes will take a chance and uh, pay for it, but most of the time he is just a big old tough competitor. And that's a good point. Win. That's a good point, Keith. We have to watch that early. He gave away a couple of easy ones last week. He's got to take better care of the ball today against Oregon. Kerry Carter will start at the tailback position or the prime running back position, and he gets the ball. He's going to throw a forward pass. Downfield, he lets it go. Intended for the tight end. He gets tangled up. Brett Pierce with Gary McCraw, but there is no flag on the play. Well, they were going after the big guy early here. They wanted that 6-6 tight end going against McGraw, and that's because Lewis isn't in the ball game. Pretty good coverage that time. Stuck with him. A lot of contact. Back judge said, let him play. Good no call. We've seen a lot of that this year. 
Good way to start off, though, Keith. Let's loosen that defense right away and say we're not afraid to go deep. It is second down and 10 from the 14-yard line. Fasani turns to throw. He puts it down the middle, and that might get a flag. Nope, that does not get a flag either. Uh, Rasuli Webster and Brett Pierce, they were looking for the tight end for the second successive play. The backs and receivers, Brian Allen, steady at tailback. And a little man, Luke Powell, shows up as a big-time player, 5'8". He's kind of like Troy Walters, kind, kind of a player. Offensive front, Chambers, Harris, uh, they're good. All these people up front are seniors, and they're all very steady players. Teo Johnson now is into the ball game, along with Jamie McCullen. On third down and 10, the Stanford goes with four wideouts. Oregon was across the line of scrimmage in a hurry, but no flags again. The pass is thrown upfield for a first down to Damian McCullen. And uh, Stanford will move the change to the 29-yard line on that pass completion. Since they were 0 for 2 passing right away, they knew they were going to pass this time. They bring it right off the bottom of the screen, and it's coming hard. Now they pick up that outside blitz, and Fasani makes this play work by buying time. The escapability we talked about earlier, he steps up in the pocket, finds his receiver, moves the chains. He is a cool customer. He's a senior, and he's tough. And it's first down for the Stanford Cardinal. And fumble! Stanford keeps the ball. Covering it is Fasani, the man that didn't come away from center. Second down and 12 for the Cardinal. Hand the ball off to Brian Allen. And Allen is taken down by, look like Moretti, the linebacker, who got a piece of him as he went by. Keith, you talked about Darrell Wright starting at right end. We were wondering why Quinn Dorsey wasn't in there. He is now. There's a matter of fact, the two are alternating. Now Dorsey goes back out. Wright comes in. So I think we're going to see a lot of that all day. Keep the ends fresh so they can put pressure on Fasani. Ball is on the 32-yard line. It is third down and seven for Stanford. No pressure on Fasani. The pass is away, and it is caught. It is caught for a first down by Brian Allen out of the backfield, and Allen makes a big play out of it as the Oregon tackling gets a bit sloppy, and he breaks two arm tackles and moves the football to the Oregon side of the field, all the way down to the Ducks' 37-yard line. The situation where Brett Pierce, the tight end, probably wanted the pass to come his way. He drags all the way across. Here he is. He's going to go like this. They don't throw him the ball, but I want you to watch what happens after they throw underneath of him to Allen. All right, here goes Fasani. He throws underneath. Now watch the tight end turn around and come get a block, the block that frees him. Great balance by Allen. He gets the first down and a lot more. 31 yards on the play. First down at the Oregon 37-yard line. Stanford beaten last week. They literally gave away 21 points to Washington State. Going for the bundle. Deep pass downfield completed to Teo Johnson. He's inside the five-yard line. It'll be first down and goal Stanford at the Oregon three. They went against Steve Smith, who's playing dinged up. And Teo Johnson, a six foot seven, 245 pound, better known as a basketball player, but on his way to becoming a real good football player. Well, they're working on that size differential, too. They know he's a great athlete, he's got speed, but he also has that size. Smith is 6'1. He's got good position, he's got leverage, but he cannot go up with Teo Johnson. Smith leaves the ball game. He's sore, remember, and did not practice all week. Kerry Carter, the big back, is in in the deep back position, gets the ball, slashes at the right side, goes to the goal line, ducks battle with him, and stop him. He did not make it in. With Brian Allen, you get a small back, 5'10", 200, explosive, with great balance. We saw it earlier. Now you come in with Kerry Carter. He's 6'2", 235. That's like a hammer and a sledgehammer. That's like a thoroughbred and a workhorse. Carter just would not go down with that size. He's explosive and powerful tackle to tackle. They're a foot short of the goal line. Second down and goal for Stanford. I'd go right back to Carter. Either that or quarterback sneak. Fullback, Casey Moore, touchdown Stanford, and Auction Stadium grows quiet. Casey Moore's first touchdown of the year. He's 240 pounds, so they're banging in there big time. Keep in mind, Moore's the guy that fumbled last week. He's thought about it all week. He said, hey, guys, I want to come back. I want to repay you because they thought they let one get away, and here he scores. Mike Vaselli is in for the point.
That snap it was low and hard, but handled nicely. Partner, they and made the it look too good. easy. Yep, they did. I remember a long time ago that happened in a Super Bowl game, and an old friend of mine turned and said, "False confidence." We'll see. Nine plays, 86 yards. Stanford goes to the lead. The Stanford Colonels zipping right down the field very tidily. Thank you very much. There was only one wobble in there, and that was a fumble that was covered by the quarterback, Fasani. Now the Cardinal kicks it off, the ball bounding down the field, and it's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be Oregon taking the ball up at the 35-yard line. The quarterback for the Oregon Ducks, they call him Captain Comeback. Joey Harrington has led eight fourth quarter comebacks for wins in the past three seasons, and there is no question he is the man for the Oregon Ducks. They're still huddled on the sidelines. Now they break out of the huddle and come to the play. Joey Harrington just has to get everybody involved early. He's got to use all his weapons. Cannot try to do it all himself. So the first snap for Oregon, trailing seven to nothing. Let's see if they've got the fast start in their game plan this week. Ball is thrown quickly out to Jason Willis, and Jason Willis will pick up a first down. Gained 12 yards on the first play of the ball game. First and 10 for the Ducks. Their ball up on the 47-yard line, and Harrington going down the middle with it. He's got Keenan Harry wide open, and Harry dives for the corner. He's out of bounds at the five-yard line. Jason White got just enough of him to keep him from going in for the score. First and goal for the Ducks, Harrington splits over the left side, gets inside the five, will pick up a yard on the play. Very quick recovery defensively by Coy Wire for the Cardinal. The Stanford defense, the leading sack man, tackle Matt Leonard, not here, back problems. Rumi tackle Trey Freeman has a bad ankle, but he's playing. Linebackers, this is a very good group, but as we told you, Gabriel is uh, wounded some, and uh, that means in the defensive secondary, Tank Williams moves out of that group and up as an outside backer with Jason White starting at free safety. Second down and goal for Oregon just inside the five-yard line. There's Tank Williams right up the top of your screen. Looks like he's coming hard on the edge. Harrington wants to throw. Does. Touchdown. Oregon. Keenan Harry. Jared Siegel for the extra point try for the Oregon Ducks. Joey Harrington holds it. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is good. Four plays, 65 yards, a minute and 19 seconds, and we're rolling downhill at Autzen Stadium in Eugene, all even at seven. They're replacing the battery. Oregon, Stanford tied at seven. Here's your Nissan game solutions for Stanford. Well, the Cardinal have to move the ball because their offense is going to be their best defense. They've got to stay on the field, keep Harrington off because the Cardinal defense is banged up. Top tacklers are out, and even when they're healthy, the defense gives up 28 points a game. For Oregon, well, Joey Harrington has to be patient, use all of his weapons. So far, all he's needed was Keenan Howry, who was involved in all three plays. But don't forget, he's got Peel, Morris, and Smith. That's a vicious attack, and right now they're working on Joey Harrington's neck. Might have a little stinger going there. That's not very good news. That kickoff is short all the way out to the 12-yard line where Brian Allen has it for Stanford, and he's going to break a big one. He's gone. He may be gone. Bowman's a man that can shot at him, and he shoves him out of bounds. Wow. Rashad Bowman tracked him down and kept him from going all the way. So Brian Allen, who can hurry, almost found the end zone with that one, carrying the ball all the way down to the Oregon 13-yard line. We may need a triple-digit scoreboard before we get through with this. That was a 76-yard return. Just following his blockers, weaving in and out, getting a lot of white jerseys in front of him, and then it was a foot race, and, of course, Bauman had a better uh, pursuit angle. Outran him, got him down, but what a way to start this drive. Big back, Kerry Carter with the deep man. He's in there with Casey Moore. Fasani sets him up and gives it to Carter. And Carter trying to bounce outside. The coverage is good. Coming over is Rashad Bowman to make the tackle. 
Keith, in Stanford's first drive, they went 80 yards in the air. Now they're going to try to establish that running game. And what Oregon's doing is they'll go eight guys in the box if they say two backs. They'll go nine guys in the box if they say two backs and two tight ends. And that puts a lot of pressures on the corners. And this is an Oregon defense that gives up about 300 yards in the air a game. Rashad Bowman had to go off the field to get a new shoe. That puts Stephen Moore in there at quarterback. Well, let's see if Fasani sees it. He looks that way. He goes that way. And the pass is completed down to about the six yard line to Luke Powell. Luke Powell, little man, making his first catch of the day. It is third down from the six yard line. And Tao Johnson, the big guy, is in replacing Powell. And he's up there at the top of the picture. And Fasani gives the ball to Kerry Carter. Touchdown. So Carter gets a couple of blocks on the left side and walks in. And just that quickly, Stanford goes back to the lead. Eric Heitman, the music composing, piano playing, uh, big left guard, all 6'4, 295 pounds of him from Katy, Texas. Keith, look at this. Look at all these defenders right here in what they call the box. They think their run is coming. And then these guys are coming hard. But the play is called perfectly. They still go to this corner and outnumber them. But Oregon expected the run. They got it and couldn't stop them. Mike Maselli for the extra point. And he got it. And so every time Stanford seen the football, they've scored. Now it's Oregon's turn again to see if they can answer again. At 8.24 to go in the first quarter, 14 to 7, Cardinals. Twenty-eight yard line for the Oregon Ducks. They went for the touchdown in four plays a little while ago. Let's see what they do now. Stanford's made some defensive changes. They've had time to do much. They pitch the ball back. And it is Maurice Morris turning around the corner, trying to get him outside, but there are three Cardinals over there to defend him, and Austin Lee was the man who got it. Two yards, three yards on the play. Three. Second down and seven for the Ducks. Here's Keenan Howery way up top. Stay with the ground game. Morris again coming around the right side. He's got a first down. He's knocked out of bounds up at the 41 yard line by Tank Williams. First down for the Ducks at their own 41 yard line. Stanford leading 14 to 7. Here's Harrington rolling out, buying time, lets it go down the side. Good to Justin Peel. They're not going to give it to him because he didn't have control of the ball when it went out of bounds. Second down and 10. Little quick pop to the sidelines. Keenan Howry. Keenan Howry battling over there, trying to get something. He gave away some in his struggle. The game will be up to about the 45 yard line, but Ryan Fernandez got a hold of him and wouldn't turn him loose. Mike Bellotti standing there in the center. Mike has lost his mustache. Keith, they moved Tank Williams to inside backer. Passes away to the sidelines. Passes completed. The fullback out of the backfield. That's close to a first down. And that's Tank Williams who made that tackle, following him out of the backfield. It looks like it might be a first down. We just told Keith. We just told you they moved Tank Williams in inside linebacker, so he has to now read through the backs for his keys. He reads that they release, gets out there quickly, and makes a nice break on Harrington's pass to make this tackle. First down for the Ducks. It's on the uh, Stanford side, just inside the Stanford 49. Harrington gives to Morris. And uh, there was pretty good penetration as Coy Wire, number 22, came over and took him down. Second down and eight here in Eugene for the Oregon Ducks. They got a couple of pretty good quarterbacks on display here, too. Joey Harrington who hung over Madison Square Garden much of the summer, turns and gives the ball to Ontario Smith, and Smith slips and slides and almost popped out of there. Harrington gets it away. He's got it. First down, Oregon inside the 20-yard line of Keenan Howry. 
How about both these teams just running up and down the field? Arrington back, pressure coming, pass away. Oh, my goodness, is Justin Peel had the ball. He didn't look at home. He turned to look for somebody to be around him, and he was so far out there, he was all by himself and lonesome and dropped it. They gambled and came with the blitz. Second down. Down the middle it goes to Peel. Go right back to him and touchdown. Siegel, a freshman from Sacramento for the extra point for the Oregon Ducks, and it's good. We're all even again at 14. Living the life of a squire. Backed up against the National Forest Preserve. Not bad. High hanging kick. Down to the one. And here comes Brian Allen again, and this time the Ducks hunt him down at the 20-yard line. Those are three terrific football games. First down for Stanford at the 20-yard line. Fasani back. Pulls it down. He's a big, tough guy out of Granite Bay, California, and he's all the way out to the 40-yard line before Wes Mallard finally brings him down. Boy, Stanford spread the field, went sideline to sideline, four wideouts to spread the defense thin, unclog the middle, and let him go up in it. Now you'll see there's not eight in the box anymore because they have all the receivers wide. And then look at this, the blocking up front, he finds the hole, escapes, and there's nobody in the secondary because they're wide with the receivers. They go double toward the, the bottom of your picture this time and put a man in motion the other way. Fasani back. Passes away, passes complete to Kerry Carter, and he's hit by two ducks at the 46-yard line. Kevin Mitchell and David Moretti, linebackers, brought him down. It'll be second down and about five. I never thought that conditioning would be a factor in late October. But here we are the third Saturday in October and these teams are going up and down the field so fast conditioning in fact may be a factor. But it's a cool day. It was 51 degrees when we started. That's why you never worry about it in October. Jim Springer, the referee, as the umpire jumps in there and throws a flag, uh, Donnie and uh, Dennis Angel. So it's second down and a little bit less than 10 yards now for Stanford after that penalty. And it's a running play out of the backfield. And it's Casey Moore, the big fullback, who doesn't give up. He just keeps on pounding and very poor tackling by the Oregon Ducks. Finally, Dave Moretti brings him down. Yeah, yeah, that's the key, Keith. You're right. I mean, it wasn't that the play was that fancy. It wasn't designed that great. There was really not much complication to it. But this is just poor tackling. Now, everybody blocks down. They try to get him on the edge. But there's Oregon. One tackle, two tackle. Here comes another tackle. That's three missed, four missed. Nobody wrapping, nobody holding on, nobody grabbing cloth and taking them down. Great effort by Casey Moore for tackling by Oregon. Ball goes first down on the Oregon 48-yard line for Stanford. We're still in the first quarter, and we've had 28 points scored already. Brian Allen goes in motion. Hassani is back, throws quickly to the far sidelines, and uh, the defender slip. Ryan Wells made the catch. And Wells is going to put the ball down inside the 30 yard line. Keith it is Keith Lewis who's playing with a bad wheel. He's got a bad ankle and he couldn't play him. Their speedster is right here. That's Luke Powell. They're going to send him and then come back under into the vacated area. Now watch here comes number six. That's Lewis. His right ankle is bad. Now watch he's going to try to plan it. Watch what happens. Woo. He just overruns the play can't stop fast enough to break down and they move the chains. First down, 29 yard line. It's Brian Allen. And the Ducks get him. Short of the line of scrimmage by two. Rashad Bowman leading the tacklers. The ball is back on the 31 yard line. A loss of two, second down and 12 for the Cardinal. As Luke Powell, little man, moving toward the middle, he goes down into the middle. Fasani throws back. Drop for the tight end, Matt Wright. Fasani with pressure. Got a block, got away, pass no good. Ball is on the Oregon 31 yard line. Stanford's going.
You've got Wells and Powell over here together. Fasani with a deep drop. Down the middle, going deep. It is caught and dropped. Teo Johnson had it and then took a whack to the side of the head and the ball came out. It looked like a McGraw and Webster with the two ducks covering and I think Webster is the man that knocked it out. Harrington quickly pops one upfield. It's good to Jamar Jason Willis and Jason Willis with that little juke step almost popped out of there. Going big. No, wasn't available. Pulls it down, goes for the first down, tiptoes down the sideline, and has a first down. First down and 10 inside the 40 yard line. Harrington going deep this time for Harry. Touchdown. Harrington holds it, and the kick is good. And so for the first time today, the Oregon Ducks, ranked fifth in the country and undefeated, have taken the lead 21 to 14. Single to kick it off. Not a very good kick. It's short and high and hanging and goes out of bounds. It'll be a Stanford ball up on the 35 yard line. So here comes Stanford now trying to answer from the 35 yard line. Pisani hands the ball away to Kerry Carter. And Carter bumps in there for a couple of yards. Second down, call it seven. Pisani with a little quick drop outside to Kerry Carter out of the backfield. And he's got a first down and then some. Finally, they throw him down. Here they go again. The ball is down to the 32 yard line before Rasuli Webster can bring Carter down. I may have to leave at halftime. <laughs> well, they threw right over the blitz because they were coming hard like this, and then they just slipped Carter out right under him. See, here comes the blitz. Here comes Noretti and Mitchell, and then there goes Carter. Well, they certainly know of the capacity of Oregon to put the pressure on using the blitz. They know that Nick Aliotta, the defensive coordinator, loves to send people. So they're dealing now on knowledge of the people involved and the philosophy of playing the game. And they're both profiting from it. First quarter is over. In the first quarter, combined for both teams, 39 plays, 390. Oregon leads Stanford 21-14, 35 points scored in the first quarter. No turnovers. Now, Oregon does have 14 interceptions, six fumble recoveries. They do make big plays, but their problem is they give up almost 300 yards a game passing, and that's where Stanford has been able to take advantage of them so far. Stanford ball, first down on the Oregon 33-yard line. Posada gives it to Carter. Carter's hit behind the line of scrimmage, but he's a big, strong guy, and uh, he's going to get something out of it. David Moretti was the first man to get to him. Put the ball on the 31 yard line to pick up the two second down and eight coming up. During that quarter change, I guarantee you the defensive coaches were telling this defense be patient, just keep getting after it. This is a team that will get sloppy with the ball. You've got to be opportunistic. 21 14, Oregon leading. Oregon might have been offside. Fasani pulls it down and he's drilled at the line of scrimmage. Gets across the 30, but you've got an Oregon offside, I'm pretty sure. Daryl Wright looked like he got caught in the neutral zone. Offside, defense, five yard penalty, still second down. Ball is on the 26 yard line now, where it is second down and four after the five yard penalty. Ducks have a five man front right now. Ball is given to Allen, bouncing outside, and Mallard couldn't do it. Mallard could not get to him and get a hand on him, and he's going to have another Stanford first down. And an Oregon man is shaken up and down on the field. So you've got a timeout for the injured player. Watch this, Keith. Here's your guy, Pierce. Watch him come down on the linebacker like this. Watch these guys come on. 
and they're just kind of slanting off and cutting off that corner. Look at that. Just shielded off. And then there he goes following all those white jerseys. It's just like sealing off the corner and letting him go around the end, and that's exactly why that play was so successful. Stanford Cartman knocking on the door again. It's first down and ten. The ball is just short of the 15 yard line on the Oregon side of the field. Right, the injured man walked off himself, just shaken up. Hassani gives the ball to Carter. Carter runs into some traffic at the 15 yard line. Quinn Dorsey back into the ball game, replacing Wright. And Dorsey led the defensive surge. Now here comes uh, Luke Powell, number six, into the ball game for Stanford, and Ryan Wells, number four, both wideouts and both very fast. Teo Johnson comes back in as well. This is a team, Keith, that's been very efficient in the red zone. 13 touchdowns, 18 trips coming into this ball game. I think you would want Teo Johnson every time you got inside the 20. Without a game, doubt. Without a doubt. And it's good to see him come in here in this situation, second and long. Second down and nine from the 14. There he is, right there. Pressure coming. Fasani got away from it and took a pretty good wallop down around the 10 yard line. I mean, he took a lick from Zach Prater. Big old tackle. Not a bad decision on his part, though, Keith, to run that football. He was looking for Teo Johnson. We circled him. We showed you where he was. All right, now he just runs a quick out, and he's working on the safety, Webster. But he's covered. It's good coverage by Webster. That's when Fasani makes the decision right then. I'm running. He yells, fire, fire. Now everybody's got to fire on a block. Right here, he'll yell, fire. Now everybody's got to find a block. He tucks it away. Good decision on his part. Makes positive yardage in a play that wasn't there. Zach Freighter, number 54, who was involved in the play, is still down on the field. So here's Chris Lewis in at quarterback now, the sophomore out of Long Beach, out of Poly in Long Beach. Another one of those. Boy, they're everywhere. And uh, it's third down and four. Tough spot for a cold quarterback. Lewis turns, gives to Carter. Carter in traffic, gang tackled. He's close to his first down. He had to get the ball to just about the five, and it looks like they marked him at about the six. Keith, this is a statement game. Ordinarily, you'd go for a field goal here. I would not be surprised if they don't load up and go for it here on fourth. Looks like it. This is where you have one of the best offensive lines in the conference. You've got three seniors. This offensive line averages 303 pounds. You get in that huddle and you tell them, look, this is where you're best. Get us the yard and a half. Rashad Bowman's got Teo Johnson. Top of the picture. They won it. And touchdown. Kerry Carter just slanted to the right side and scored for Stanford. It does not appear at this point that the Oregon defensive front can handle the Cardinals. Well, they pull the guard to get him out in front. They seal the linebackers, and Carter does the rest. Vesely for the point. Good. It's the third time this game has been tied. We're now 21-21, 11:53 to play in the first half. We're in Eugene, Oregon, where the Oregon Ducks have have won 23 in a row at home. We are all even at 21 in Eugene Autzen Stadium, but all eyes right now are on the Stanford bench. Randy Fasani has injured his right knee, and it looks like it's a knee sprain is what they're saying right now. Doubtful for the rest of the game, Keith, so we may see Keith Lewis the rest of the way. 
All right, Todd, thank you. And uh, Stanford tying the game at 21 will kick it off from the 35 yard line. The deep people for the Oregon Ducks. Ontario Smith, Sammy Parker. It's Parker, number one, coming from the goal line with it. He's a burner, but he can't find much room as the Cardinal track him down and stop him short of the 20-yard line. Keith, we're talking about Fasani and the injury, and, of course, that puts a lot of pressure on young Chris Lewis. But keep in mind, he's the guy that replaced Fasani in the first quarter against number five, Texas, and proceeded to throw for 214 yards and three touchdowns. And I'm sure everybody remembers what he did against USC when he came in and threw a game-winning 20-yard touchdown pass to McCollum. So, I mean, he's a guy that can come in and make some plays for you. Comes off the bench very well, but I'm not entirely sure that uh, he doesn't, be better, doesn't do better coming off the bench than he does starting. Look like they're going to put a cast on, temporary at least, on Fasani now. As Oregon will try to run the ball from around the 19-yard line and uh, gets nothing out of it. The AFLAC trivia question for this week. These six current NFL head coaches, current NFL head coaches, have coached at Stanford. How many combined Super Bowls have they won? That's a pretty good-looking list, isn't it? Six it ever. Ball is right on the 20. The gain was about a yard, second down and nine. Morris. Not a whole lot. He had a, a little crack there for a bit, but when he planted and got back to it, the white church got there. Yeah, but number one just went up there and joined him. That yeah, ball had to be thrown in a hurry because there was Might a, be a fumble. Up. Might be a fumble. Uh, they apparently going to call it fumble. Brian Taylor picks it up and runs it into the end zone. That's a touchdown. And they're going to call it touchdown for Stanford. It was a lateral maybe, huh? The ball was thrown uh, out to Morris, and Morris didn't control it. It went bounding around, and then Taylor picked it up and took it into the end zone. There was a little indecision by the officials. They were all looking at each other for help. Uh, yes, and now they're bringing it back. Springer. Jim Springer suddenly comes over here and says, no, 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 and brings it back up. It wasn't. I don't see how it could. It, but he never had control of the ball. It couldn't be a fumble. It had to be a lateral. If that ball is backwards, that's a live ball. And you know that the officials were a little bit confused and they signaled touchdown. And then you're right, Springer came in and overruled him. Well, he's right. He should. First punt of the ball game ball is coming up. Incomplete. Fourth down. That's a good bit of officiating right there because they had already signaled. Although I and you know it's hard to tell from these angles but right there it looks like that ball's being thrown backwards that's a live ball. Arroyo is in the punt Luke Powell is waiting to return it for Stanford. Jose Arroyo has done a good job getting better as the season has gone along and this time he can't get it to turn over and it kicks out of bounds just barely across midfield so that's not a very good kick. It's going to be marked out at the Stanford 48 yard line 28 yard punt. Keith, take another look. Let me let me look at this. And you tell me what you think. Well watch out where he throws it and where that ball is touched. All right. He's on this line. Go ahead and, and, and roll it now. That's that pass is backwards. That's a live ball should have been a touchdown. I'm not sure. Well, I'm positive. It's now. close. <laughs> because uh, where, where was the ball thrown from? And uh, you well, marked it, but you didn't mark it back where the ball came from. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, you're right. The decision's it, made, and Stanford comes to the attack. The pass is completed <laughs> down around the 45-yard line for pickup of about seven yards. Steve Smith working against Luke Powell. 45 yard line, second down and three. Fumble! Stanford covers it. Casey Moore jumping on it. And you've also got a penalty flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. Second down and eight. Chris Lewis gives it away to Brian Allen and Allen. Back down a little bit short of the line of scrimmage. Rasuli Webster, who's played very well so far today with help from Kevin Mitchell. Oregon loves to blitz on third and longs. 
See if it comes. Third and 11. They've stopped it before the snap. Third down and 11 now. And Chris Lewis looking. Gets his pass away and it's incomplete. Thrown behind Luke Powell. And it would have been an uncatchable ball under any circumstances. And Chris Lewis took a pretty good lick himself on that play. So as the day wears on, attrition beginning to set in as uh, Fasani is gone with a big brace on his leg now. Chris Lewis does not make a very good play here. They got pretty good pressure. They brought it off the edge. He felt it coming and then took a lick. Did not deliver a very good ball. And here's Stanford's first punt of the day. That's Keenan Howery waiting. Circles under it. It's a little room. Gets a wall. It's goodbye. Oh, the last man, Eric Johnson, brought him down. He had an angle and he slipped past the would be blocker and he knocks Howry out of bounds down at the six yard line. 81 yards on the return. If Howry cuts it back inside, he walked in, but. His tank might have been low. He might have been running on fumes at about that point. Well, he reads this so well and gets so many blocks. Stop right here. Look at the block he gets here. Look at the block he has here and here. And the wall is set. That is just so well done by special teams. He's got the comeback blocker. Now it's just a foot race. Oh, that was so well done yeah, on the right return. Outran Dorsey on the play. Quinn get, couldn't get to him to put the block on him. But it's first and goal Oregon now at the Stanford six yard line. And this is Morris. And that's just about the line of scrimmage. Coy wire the tackle. He's down in the running area Keith and Stanford's been very tough to run against. Second down and goal from the six. Here goes Morris. Foot raise. He got there. Touchdown. And here's Siegel for the point. Good. And so Oregon goes back to the lead at 7.01 to play in the first half. We're expecting delivery of the triple digit scoreboard by the end of the third quarter. All right, we're at 28 21. Oregon back to the lead and a wild shootout at Autzen Stadium in Eugene. And the Ducks will kick it off now to the Stanford Cardinals. Stanford is without Randy Fasani. He's hurt a knee and he's out for the rest of the day. Arroyo is going to do the kicking this time because Siegel hasn't put enough leg on it. And this time Jose gets more leg, but he hooks it out of bounds and it's up on the 35 yard line anyhow. Earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question uh, which of these six current NFL coaches uh, all coached to Stanford at one time as assistants. How many combined Super Bowl wins have they collected. Well now the answer is 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 four. Four Super Bowl titles. Dennis Green was the head coach at Stanford all the others were assistant coaches. Of course Dick Vermeil and Coach Billick at Baltimore, they just won theirs the last couple years. George Seifert was there with Bill Walsh. They just succeeded him. Long, colorful history. First down and 10 now for the Cardinal from the 35 yard line. The Ducks have the lead. Now they'll try to stop Stanford as Chris Lewis goes back, gets his pass away, and throws it away. He was being harassed from the get go as Daryl Wright back into the ball game kept reaching and reaching and finally got a piece of him just as he threw it. Now Texas has a 10 point lead over Colorado in the second quarter of play and there of course is, is the one that made some noise in the West as Boise State beat Fresno State at Fresno last night. 
There's Wright grabbed the back of his helmet, pulled him forward. He still kept his balance, but Keith, you have the feeling that this drive is going to be huge psychologically for yep. Chris Lewis. Yep, I think so. Hands it away to Kerry Carter, and the Ducks now are getting some penetration, and they're swarming Kevin Mitchell, the first one to get there. Third down and ten. Blitz coming. Balls away. It's not catchable. It's thrown into the seats. <laughs> Number 39, Kevin Mitchell. Blitzen was in his face when the ball was released. And that was not a good series for the Cardinal. And they'll have to punt it. For that guy right there, though, that's not all bad. Third down and 10. He ends up throwing it away. That could have been a very, very Difficult situation for him. He throws a pick there, changes the whole ball game. He throws it away. He's okay. Hunter Eric Johnson is in there. He's had a punt blocked in each of the last two games, but he uh, was the one who tracked down Keenan Howie a little while ago and kept him from scoring on a return. That's a low line drive kick. Howie goes back, fields it at the 20 yard line, and this time he doesn't quite get the same ball he had before. It's up on the 39 yard line, first down, Oregon. Ontario Smith is in there as a single back now for Oregon. Harrington back throwing. Got a man. Harry penalty flag thrown where uh, Harrington was put down. It could be holding, it could be roughing. Harrington rolling out. Got a good block. Get a pass away. Pass is completed up beyond the 40 yard line. Right at the 40 yard line to Sammy Parker. It is second down and nine from the 40. Harrington gets his pass away, and it's complete to George Webster, the tight end, and he picks up a first down. Big George, 6'4", 245 from Van Nuys, California. We just call this a little slipster. Just take that thing and just kind of slip right in there. And Harrington does this as well as anybody kind of holds the linebackers up with a half hearted play action and then there he is just kind of folds in behind him. That's a big load now I want you to watch number 15 here Taylor just kind of dive at his feet and take him over say he's bigger than I am I'm not rapping I'm just going to trip him up with my body and it's first down at midfield for Oregon. Little action action. Pitches it back to Ontario Smith. Transferred, went to Tennessee originally, played there, didn't like it, came back to the West, and then came here, and he just bolted for a first down at the Stanford 26 yard line. And I think Old Bo has just put on a green shirt. Two inches shorter, two pounds heavier, and getting better all the time. Here comes Howry, he's got it. Going to throw it. Comes back the other way, trying to throw it back to Harrington. Harrington got tangled up with one of the linebackers, Matt Fredericks, and couldn't get loose. And Matt says, Aha, uh -huh, I see you trying to sneak out there, and he wouldn't let him. And the pass is incomplete. But there was no question they had contact. He impeded his progress. Here's the flip back. Reads the play nicely. Reads Keenan Howry, who leads him there with his eyes, and then he just jumps in front of him. Watch 51 right of your screen. That's Fredericks. Kind of hits him and says, "Wait a minute, I didn't do it." And the ball was overthrown. They said it wasn't catchable, but could have been called for defensive holding. He had second down and ten for Oregon. This is becoming Keenan Harry Day around here. This is Ontario Smith going over the right side. He hits in there with a pretty good suck. He's a 5'10, 195 pound sophomore. And he's inside the 25 for the 23. Third down and seven. Rolls this way. Harry's over here. He lets it go. It's incomplete. Sammy Parker turned back inside. Harry was not available. He simply couldn't make progress down the field. They wouldn't let him. And Parker turned back inside, and by then the ball was gone. So hey, it's fourth down. Keith, we were both talking about momentum. That is a pretty good stop for Stanford. They can yes, they can go ahead and take that and build upon that. They're gonna go for the field goal here. 
Siegel will come in and he's going to hit the ball from the 31 yard line. So it's a 41 yard field goal try for Oregon. He has the leg for that distance. Just misses to outside the right upright, and so Stanford holds, and Oregon is turned away. And it's 28-21, Oregon with 3:21 to play. And to get up in the morning and have breakfast with his mom. And then, ball is handed off to Brian Allen. Allen breaks a tackle, runs through the stack, and goes all the way up to the 40-yard line. Rasuli Webster finally dragged him down. It'll be the 41 yard line. You watch him run and you say, How does he get free? They had defenders all around him. You know, Ty Willingham was telling us this week. He said, Brian Allen is tough, he's intelligent, and he anticipates well. What he's added to the package is the ability to become more instinctive. And he just kind of feels a hole and slips through one, even if it's just barely there. First down on the 41. Chris Lewis back looking. He wants to go deep. He's looking for Johnson. Can't find Johnson. Now you got a penalty flag thrown. The ball is completed up here at the 47 yard line of Oregon. But let's see about the flag. Holding defense. Penalty defense. is declined. First down. It's on the defense. How about that? Oh, with Maryland and Florida State going after. Ball's on the Oregon side again. 48 yard line. They run it with Brian Allen. Having a hard time getting him down. He's down to the 45, pickup of two. Second down and eight. Chris Lewis, play action, pass is thrown and completed to Casey Moore coming out of the backfield, and that's right on the first down marker and a yard past it, so move the chain. Well, and you start running the ball, and then you go to play action, and then all of a sudden you start throwing to your fullback underneath. You're taking away the long pattern. Now, why is this successful? Well, look at this offensive line. You look at the games that they've started. You look at the experience that they have. They've got the three seniors. They average 303 pounds. This is what makes this running game go. This is why they're second in the conference in running the ball. I think Chris Lewis might be a little better with the short passing game, too. Yes. The deep stuff. He's looking to go deep this time for Luke Powell, and uh, that's looped up over his head and well beyond. Not catchable as Bowman uh, defended on the play. You need the wind machine to come in here and pump everybody up at halftime. They've screamed themselves hoarse already. 28 <laughs> 21, Oregon leading. 35 first quarter points, I guess so. Timeout, Stanford. Okay, that that could be a problem. It's it's like Oregon's had what amounts to about three seasons so far. And don't forget, UCLA has a makeup game after Arizona, USC. Arizona State. The last time they had that, Miami bit them, took them right out of the national right. championship picture. And all kind of potholes down the road. All right, here we go on second down and ten. Stanford ball at the Oregon 36. Oregon leading 28-21. Well, there's something going on at that end of the stadium, and whatever it is, they want it either moved or stopped. Well, there's an automobile driving around down there, and they want it out of the way. All right, it's out of the way. Going second and ten. Here we go. Got a man in motion. That's Carter. Chris Lewis back looking to throw. Goes down the middle with it. Throws it. Yeah, I don't think Casey Moore ever really located the ball. He was looking over his right shoulder. The ball was thrown over his left. There is a flag, and it's going to be holding against Stanford. So that incompletion even gets worse on all kinds of pressure. Quinn Dorsey, I think, was the primary pursuer here. Well, they overloaded on the left side. They brought pressure from everywhere, got good pursuit. Dorsey gets the hit. And there's holding just trying to keep him off the quarterback Lewis. Bilotti says decline it. 
Well, that's a 10 yarder. Yeah, they're going to enforce it. Well, I don't know why he would want to even try to decline it because now it takes him out of field goal range, moves it all the way back to the 46, almost the 47. And it makes it second down in a taxi cab ride. Ball is just short of the 46 yard line, second down and 20. Oregon defense trying to take away now the Stanford offense and getting more penetration. The ball is thrown into an open space and it is incomplete. Well, the Stanford defense fought him off a little while ago, and Siegel barely missed a 41 yard field goal. Score remaining at 28 21 with two minutes to play in the first half. Your mismatch was at the top of the screen. Lewis his pass is away, and it should. No. Bowman had a. Had a Eye on it, but he couldn't get to it either. And now you got another penalty flag thrown back up here on the other side of this. This might be on Moretti for hitting might late. Be. Might be. Carter. Ducks hit like they're a little hot right now, and Moretti was the man. Second down and nine. Chris Lewis rolls and looks. Throws underneath and it's, it's incomplete. He tried to get it to Luke Powell and he's lucky to get it back. That was almost picked off. Crowd trying to help. Lewis gets it away. He's hit as he throws and it is batted away. Incomplete. Kevin Mitchell had a shot at it and just tipped it. Either he hit the arm or he hit the ball. Wind is not a factor. On the way, hooked oh. it badly. And so Stanford is turned away. Saudi hurt a knee. He's in a brace and he's out for the day. Maybe longer. This is Maurice Boris. Breaks that tackle. Goes to the 40 yard line. Close to a first down. Coy Wire. Quite a remarkable guy. He he led the team in rushing at one time, moved to the defensive side of the ball, and now leads the team in tackles. Here's part of our conversation with him yesterday as we talked about him being dinged up a bit. You know, the rest of our defense as well is going to have to step up, and, you know, it's, it's the true measure of a man isn't where he stands in times of comfort, but when he's faced with adversity. So I think this game tomorrow is really going to be a test of our, our will and our character. And part of that reference is the fact that Matt Leonard, who was the leading sacker on the team, the big tackle, is home with the bad back. And I don't know if Matt's going to play anymore this year or not. Yeah, there, there are the numbers on Coy Wire. You see what he did as a running back and very impressive. Then they move him to defense, and he's the first player in modern history to lead Stanford in rushing. He got away from Coy Wire. Yeah, and Wire gets up dragging that shoulder. He's got a bad shoulder, really couldn't wrap him and hold him. Coy Wire playing in pain. Time called by Oregon. Ball is just short of the 40. Coy Wire. Quite a remarkable guy. He, he led the team in rushing at one time, moved to the defensive side of the ball, and now leads the team in tackles. Here's part of our conversation with him yesterday as we talked about him being dinged up a bit. You know, the rest of our defense as well is going to have to step up and you know, it's, it's the true measure of a man isn't where he stands in times of comfort, but when he's faced with adversity. So I think this game tomorrow is really going to be a test of our, our will and our character. And part of that reference is the fact that Matt Leonard, who was the leading sacker on the team, the big tackle, is home with the bad back. And I don't know if Matt's going to play anymore this year or not. Yeah, there, there are the numbers on Coy Wire. You see what he did as a running back and very impressive. Then they move him to defense, and he's the first player in modern history to lead Stanford in rushing yards and tackles. And uh, he, he knows he's playing handcuffed right now because he had a chance to make that tackle, and his arm is all taped up. He's in some pain. He, he didn't have all his strength, and he couldn't wrap up, and they, they picked up nine yards on a play that really could have been a one-yard loss. So he knows that he's not all there today. Coy is another one of the youngsters who came from Pennsylvania to play football at Stanford. He's out of Camp Hill, PA. Stanford coming in knew that the longer they held the ball, the less time that Joey Harrington would have on the field. And
they're doing that, but the scores were coming so fast, it really doesn't make much difference. Sun pops out now for the closing moments of the first half. 39 seconds as we get it going, and Stanford jumps all over Maurice Morris as he tries for the first down. He's close, and I think the mark's going to give it to him. That'll stop the clock at 35 seconds. Now Stanford. Morris coming from Chester, South Carolina to play ball here at Oregon. I'm sorry. Keith, that's all. I was going to say Stanford now has to be aggressive. They can't get into one of these prevent things. 30 seconds left. They've got to continue to play aggressively. Sideline. Good tackle over there. A sure tackle on Jason Willis by Reuben Carter. And timeout again to Oregon. That leaves him with 25 seconds, and they've got one timeout remaining. Second down and six. Harrington's pass to the sideline is complete to Jason Willis, and he tiptoes out of bounds very quickly right about midfield. He's short of a first down by two yards. He's got to go vertical with 20 seconds. And to counter that, you're right, to counter that, they take Tank Williams and they make him now a safety. There's the vertical right there, and it's incomplete intended for Keenan Howry. Now that's Kent Bear, the defensive coordinator, pulling no strings. Fourth and 11, and uh, uh, fourth and one, excuse me, and they're punting with Arroyo getting a lot of air under this baby. And it's into the end zone. Into the end zone. So Jose knocks it uh, beyond the field of play, a 50 yarder. And you've only got eight ticks remaining in the first half. There's the knee, and here comes the clubhouse for the two teams. And the half is over. The half. Oregon 28, Stanford 21. ABC Sports presentation to college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We had a total of 35 points scored in the first quarter. Got a little quieter in the second quarter. Halftime 28-21. Here's some of the highlights. Well, you hate it when you see a guy like Randy Fasani get hurt because he was off to such a brilliant start. Here he goes to his big guy, Teo Johnson, six foot seven. You're jumping, Jack. That's one touchdown. Hands it off to Carter. He's your bully back. He runs in it for another. But this is the play he got hurt. Scrambling, gets caught inside. His leg gets caught up under him. He goes out for the game. That brings in Chris Lewis. And then the game slowed down dramatically after that. Yeah, Oregon had an opportunity or two, but they couldn't cash it in either. The Stanford defense hung in, but I think going to the clubhouse at half time, definitely Oregon had to feel pretty good. Yeah, they sure did. And the way uh, Oregon started here, we're actually both teams, I mean, the two of us were tired here at half the Track quarter. Meet, for heaven's sake. Yeah, it was, but then it slowed <laughs> down. And now it's going to be interesting to see because Oregon does have that momentum and they've got things going well. It's going to be interesting to see how the Stanford coaches respond to that, change the game plan, get in these kids' heads to keep them in this ball game. The man who handles the ball on every play is so important and we're about to see testimony to that as we go to the second half now with a kickoff to the Ducks and it's from the two yard line Sammy Parker and Parker gets it up to about the 23 yeah, and neither, here they go neither defense really played well in the first half no. from the 23 yard line Maurice Morris with a little dance right come back to the left and he picks up two. Explosive first half, Keith. Take a look at the first half stats. You see the rushing yards. Most of it came through the air. As a matter of fact, when Oregon scored first, it was 80 yards through the air. And when Stanford came and scored, it was 60 yards through the air. And of course, passing yards have been off the charts. You look at the time of possession, that really hasn't been a factor because they've scored so quickly. But return yards, that advantage goes to Oregon, and that is big. Justin Peel was pretty quiet in that first half. He dropped a pass, caught a pass, and then caught a touchdown pass. Uh, we may see more of him here in the second half. They throw underneath to Keenan Harry, and Harry takes a whack from uh, Reuben Carter. But he bounces right up. He's made out of rubber. Morris is the deep man. Harrington's pass is away to the sideline. Drilled it, and Jason Willis caught it. And I mean, that was a hot rock, but he hung on. Second down and eight. And penalty. May have a flinch on the offensive side. Because uh, Tank Williams came racing up in there. And Harrington quickly this way goes to Jason Willis. 
And Willis Kenton get away. Coming over to make the tackle is Carter and uh, Ryan Fernandez, the two corners. Third down 11. Protection was there. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage and uh, knocked down Coy Wires. The man has got his hand on it. So it brings up fourth down, and Oregon doesn't uh, have a particularly good series for that starting that possession. Keith, I love this guy. I mean, he just plays. He's playing with a bad wing. His arm's hurt. He's got a new reel on it. Here he comes, sees an opening, and says, All right, I'm going to put some pressure on Harrington. Harrington had the feeling coming from behind because it was an awkward release. And they're punting. Arroyo gets it out of there. Gets a lot of air under it, forcing a fair catch call by Luke Powell at the 33 yard line. So, pretty good field position for Stanford. 33 yard punt. All right, here's Chris Lewis in at quarterback in relief of the injured Randy Fasani. Lewis very quickly stands up, throws outside, goes to Powell. And Luke, 5 8, brought down by Rashad Bowman. Zach Prater, who was injured for Oregon, the defensive tackle in the first half, was said to have a concussion, a light concussion. So he probably won't play either. This is Brian Allen going outside and going out right about the marker. So the Oregon defense, very aggressive here as they go to their first possession. Third down and 10. Lewis gets it away and it is caught. It is short, however, of the first down as two ducks jump on Teo Johnson. The first man was Kevin, uh, Steve Smith, and then he got some help from Kevin Mitchell. So the big guy was there to make the catch, but not enough, and Stanford will punt. On fourth and three, Eric Johnson in the punt. Keenan Howry waiting for Oregon. Got a little room. First man missed him, uh, but here comes three more. And they put him away at about the 27 yard line. That was a 36 yard punt, but good hang time and only a three yard return this time by Keenan Harry. First down and 10 from the 27 yard line now for the Oregon Ducks, and they lead 28 to 21. Ball game that started out wildly, but has slowed down some. Joey Harrington puts it in the air. Sammy Parker, great play by Ryan Fernandez. One hand, that's all he got on it, but that was enough. I am amazed at Fernandez's speed. He was staying with Parker. Parker, as you mentioned, is a speedster. He's a little bit behind him, but I don't think Fernandez ever cared about that. He was watching the ball and reading it the whole time like an offensive receiver and almost had the interception. Boy, that was good coverage. Ball a little bit underthrown by Joey Harrington. Yeah, a little longer, and I think uh, Parker had the speed to separate. But it's second down and 10. Well, I know he believes that. He's the guy that always says, if I'm here, but I'm leaving. <laughs> Go the other way and give Parker a chance, but he doesn't have a chance. The ball arrived, and so did Reuben Carter. Third down and seven now from the 30. Tank Williams now goes back to safety and is playing back by the 40 deep. Harrington pulls it down, fumbles the ball, dives on it, and keeps it. And he's close to a first down. A unique way to get it. Still no turnovers in the game. Nobody's open. It's a quarterback draw. It's called in the huddle, and the ball just slipped away from him. You're right. It looks like a bar of soap. But he's smart enough to hustle after it, get down on it. He's a tough kid. You got to measure it. It's that close. Luke Powell goes back to receive the punt from Jose Arroyo. He hasn't really hit a big one yet. He had one to go 50, but it was in the end zone. They could use one right here. Uh, 
bounces out of bounds and Stanford again has pretty good field position after that punt. That's out at the 33 yard line and it's a 31 yard punt. So the Cardinals are it around. First down at the 33 yard line for Stanford. Chris Lewis hands it away to Kerry Carter. And he's got a couple of yards. Amazing. Second down and eight. Lewis under pressure throws it as he's falling down. He got rid of the ball. Well, and they're yelling for uh, intentional grounding because he was still within the tackles, but he threw it right at the feet of Brett Pierce, so that was a legal pass. Ball is at the 35 yard line. It is third down and eight. And throwing on the run, he again throws the ball low and it bounces beyond Teo Johnson. So once again, we see a little tango offense here. And Stanford comes in to kick it. Watch this snap, Keith. Throws as good as Harrington and Fasano. It's a good one with a tight spin. Keenan Harry looking for a crack. He may have a block in the back against Oregon. Harry still going, still going, still going, still going. The defender flag way back up field. He's in the end zone, but hold everything. Hold on for the flag. There's no foul on the play. Oh. No foul. Touchdown. Touchdown. And that guy's furious. Kick is good. Here comes the kickoff for the Oregon Ducks now. It's Siegel again, is it? Siegel's going to kick this one. Arroyo did it the last time and hooked it out. And waiting for it, you've got Wells and Howard. And it's 35 21 Oregon with 7.37 to play in the third quarter. And this is a good kick. High and it goes down to the eight yard line for Brian Allen. And Brian Allen, Allen who's return. had a pretty good sized day himself, comes out to the 28 yard line. Keith, all the Stanford folks at home are saying, what's happening here? But I want to show you this is good, this is good. Guys locked on everywhere. Then here comes the push right here. That's where he throws the flag, but he picks it back up. Bottom line is they still should have made these tackles right here. These are missed tackles. Keenan Howry is a superstar. There's the push in the back, but Keenan Howry is a superstar. Takes it to the house. You're right. Move point, touchdown, and a great run back. Well, I don't know what the back judge said to Jim Springer, but he must have said, uh, I anticipated, and what I thought was going to happen didn't, and I uh, pick up my flag. Only explanation I can possibly offer you. Here's Chris Lewis airing it out down the middle of the field and it is incomplete batted away from Luke Powell by Steve Smith and we're off to see John Saunders. And they played a lot of tough games this year. Defense has it right? They go to Brian Allen on the run over the left side and he's going to move it from the 28 out to the 34. That's just good power football right there. They took Pierce the tight end and kind of put him in motion as another lead blocker and then they just ran Allen right up in there. Give him seven yards. Uh, ball's closer to the 35. But Oregon right now is sitting on a 14 point lead over the Stanford Cardinal who lost their quarterback Randall Fasani early on to a sprained knee at least. Allen again. Oh, ball is loose, and our Oregon Ducks have got it. David Moretti hit him head on and knocked it out of his grip, and the Ducks recover it. Oh, my goodness. And he gets the ball. And he's in there for three up to the 28 yard line before Coy Wire makes the tackle. Harrington going to the end zone, intercepted by Tank Williams. And he's got some room. And now he's down. 
and a penalty flag back on the 25-yard line as Amon Gordon through the block. Yeah, I think this is going to go against Stanford. We'll yep. wait and see. We've been doing a lot of refereeing this afternoon. But this is Tank Williams' appeal. We've been talking about this matchup all day. 13 Tank Williams, pretty good coverage, looks back, reads the eyes, and cuts in front to make the pick. Now, Ten yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Big and legal block in the back. It's on Harrington, too. He gets hammered in the back and goes down in a heap, but he's all right. Well, we saw it last week. Once there's an interception, teams are taught to go after the quarterback, put him on his back. You get too aggressive, and he just hits him from behind. And so the penalty is going to back the Cardinal up considerably all the way back to the 15 yard line, but it's another great play by Tank Williams. Tank Williams' third interception of the year. He just didn't have quite enough air under the ball. Ball is handed away to Kerry Carter trying to get outside, and the big fella from Canada is finally going to get rolled up at about the 20 yard line. Luke Powell comes into the ball game. He's a speedster, has only three catches today. Second down and five from the 20. Lewis getting heat. Ball bounding around. Incomplete forward pass. His arm clearly went forward. Kevin Mitchell again harassing Lewis. Stanford 0 for their last eight third downs. This time Lewis has some time. He's wide open. man wide open. I mean wide open. It's Ryan Wells. And finally down at the 30 yard line. Rasuli Webster tracked him down. They're lucky he didn't go all the way. That's a 50 yard play. It took so long for him to locate him because something happened. It looked like they were in a cover two and Bowman thought he was just going to give him up to the safety. But there's no safety back there. He's standing there waiting for the ball. Could have raised his arm and fair catch it. By that time the defense was coming down on him. Still a big pickup. Lewis does find him eventually and just make sure that if the pass is OK to get there. Nothing fancy. Don't overthrow him. First down. Right inside from the 30 yard line. The gain is a couple to the 28. Second down and eight. And a timeout call by Stanford. Second down and eight now from the 28 yard line. Little play action. Lewis buying time looking and throws for Jackson. And it is incomplete. Third down and eight. Stanford at the Oregon 28. He has some time here. Now lets it go. And he's going for Johnson again. And touchdown. Johnson out jumped Bowman and came down with the ball. Well, we talk about size mismatch, and there it is. He goes up after it and then uses his strength to take it away from Bowman. Rashad had played it as well as he could play it. Here's a guy that first team all conference. Everybody talks about him as a DB. He loves to talk about it, loves to talk while he's out there, and there was just strength and size that won that battle. Nice play by Johnson. Remarkable, actually, for his first full season of college football. And the kick is down the highway, and it's a 35-28 ball game. Seven points separating them at three and a half to go in the third quarter. Well, Keith, you said it was good coverage, and in fact it was. You look at this ball, and it looks like Bowman has it first. And then Teo just takes it away from him. And when he comes over, he says, hey, that's a touchdown. I've got it. Nicely done. Here's a guy, 6'7", 245. You mentioned he plays basketball, very athletic. Two-port star, and uh, man, this is just an outstanding play. He just took it away from Bowman. Bowman can't play it any better. Inside out, he thought he had the interception. If he keeps playing that position, Oh my. What do you always say? Big fast people beat little fast people. Perfect classic example of it right there. Joey Harrington looked like he had the Ducks really going a while ago, but interception by Tank Williams turned it. And they cashed it in. Here comes Ontario Smith. 
broke the first wave. Now it's a foot race. He's got one man to beat. Sammy Parker knocks him off track. There are no flags, and Oregon has scored another touchdown. 95-yard run by Ontario Smith. Once, twice, knocks him off stride. Touchdown, Smith. Kick good by Siegel. And it's 42-28 just that quickly. Good high hanging kick down to the seven yard line for Brian Allen. Give him a crack and you'll be watching his hip pocket. That's a good return all the way past the 40 out near the 43. It's been an extraordinary football game. Special teams are special. Here's Kerry Carter looking for some daylight. Finds a little bit. When it looked like he was going to lose some, he gained about four. Here's John Saunders from Times Square Stadium. I just, I, I really hated what's been happening to Joe this year. Just, just cool. <laughs> That's the only way I can put it. Not much there this time. Locking on him uh, in a hurry. It was looked like it was Seth McEwen, maybe. Had him wrapped. Chris Lewis better hurry. He gets it away, and it is incomplete. And he took a one. Eric Johnson in the punt. Keenan Howard is waiting. Pretty good kick by Johnson. He splits him. Splits another pair. And then gets hit from behind uh, out on the 25-yard line. Taylor, the snapper, brought him down. Good one. Kid from Maryland. Keith, let's take a look at the Pacific game life, the Pacific life game summary. And uh, boy, this is special teams made special. Here's the first return. Stanford making a pay. This is Allen. Then here comes Keenan Howry. Brings it back the other way. Good field position. He end up scoring. And of course, you just talked about Ontario Smith and how special that return was. A lot of yards by the special teams today in a game that scored a lot of points. Oregon leading by 14. And they have the ball at the 25 first down. Pitch that ball back to Maurice Morris. Morris trying to get the corner. Does get the corner. And he's run out of bounds finally. Up at the 42 yard line. So Keith, what's special about this Oregon offense is the wide receivers throw blocks all over the field. Staying with the run. Go back to Morris and he's going to lose something this time as Stanford rolls him up in a hurry. We go a minute to go in the third quarter now, inside a minute. Harrington rolls that way, still looking. Now lets it go back in the middle of the field, and the pass is caught by Howie. He's gone to the left. Now he comes back to help his quarterback, and his quarterback found him. It's a pickup on the play of about 10 yards, but they're still going to be a little short of the first down. Just terrific afternoon of football. First down and 10. The ball is on the Stanford 48 yard line. Harrington puts air under it for Parker. Can't get it. One yard too long. And we played three here in Eugene. ABC Sports presentation of college football back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Well, here we go to the final quarter. Who knows what's in store of us because it has been wild to this point. 42 28, Oregon by 14. They have the ball. Second down and 10. And the ball is on the Stanford 48 yard line as we begin the final period. Here comes the blitz and whistles before the snap. So it's second down and 15. Pressure still coming. Joy gets it away, and he's got a man, and it is incomplete. Short hopped it. Keenan Harry couldn't quite get all of it. And when it hits the grass, it's a short hop. Boy, all of a sudden, Stanford is just getting after him. Fredericks was coming hard. He had to rush this throw. Consequently, it's it's low. And here's a guy with a jillion all-purpose yards today. Almost got that ball. It was close. 
Yeah, he's 13 yards short of Bobby Moore's record. Third down and 15. A lot of time for Harrington. Nobody to throw. Now you got a penalty flag. You're going to have a holding call coming against Oregon, I think. The pass is completed to Howie for a first down. That is incredible. The ball comes all the way back to the 32 yard line on the Oregon side of the field now. It's third down and 30. So the Stanford aggressiveness and Oregon penalties are paying off for the Cardinal. Harrington goes with it. And it is wide of uh, Justin Peel, the tight end, and the Ducks will have to punt it. You know, this has become a dangerous play. They try to protect him with that halo because you've got the two outside guys bearing down on him, and you don't want him to get hit until he caught, catches it. So they give him that, that circle protection. But guys this year have been hitting him anyway and taking the 15. Blocked. Block it. Stanford may have it. Alex Smith. The tight end is the man that came flying in and got it, I think, number 87. So the Cardinal makes another break and gives the offense another opportunity down at the Oregon 18 yard line. Tell me, co coaches don't know what they're talking about. Just before the game out in the hall, they said, hey, you better put Smith on your board, number 87, because he's going to play today. He comes in and he makes his block right up the middle. See big number 87 there? He's 6'5, just got through and blocked it. They're going to call this the 17 yard line. Chris Lewis trying to catch it in in a hurry, and it's a perfectly thrown ball to Luke Powell. And the catch is made down inside the five yard line, where it's going to be first down and goal for Stanford. Tyre Willingham being the outstanding coach of the years in his seventh year at the farm. He's telling his kids, hang in there. There's still 14 minutes left. We score here. We're right back in it. You know, just keep your heads about you. Let's take care of business. They're thinking now they can still win this ball game. Well, you know what? They're right. Power running formation. Casey Moore standing in front of Kerry Carter. Carter gets it. Bangs up the middle, bangs up the middle into the end zone. There's a penalty flag. Back to the 10 they go where it's Carter getting it again. He's at the five. He's down to the three. So Kerry Carter playing with more abandon than I've ever seen him play today. I mean, he is just throwing his body at people. And he's a big guy. And to put an exclamation point on that, I love this offensive line that's blocking for Carter. Chambers, Heitman, Boisha, Schindler, oh. Harris. Ball is just inside the four yard line. We're at second down and goal. Carter again. And down he goes. Coming across to make the play is number 30, Quinn Dorsey. First man to get there, and he got him high and rode him down. Third down and goal from the two. I'd give it to him again, and I'd stay behind that big offensive line. There's confusion. Dale Johnson doesn't know where he's he supposed to be. Four on the play clock. They got it off. Here's Chris Lewis rolling out. Tackles back at the eight yard line. They were confused. Steve Smith got through there, and on a bootleg, he went in and nailed the quarterback. 24 yard field goal try coming up. Mike Baselli. Now you got penalty flags all over the field as uh, looked like Quinn Dorsey had encroached. I won't be surprised if he throws to Johnson. That's a good call too because they don't have a running back in the ball. They got Alex Smith in there. Now here comes Carter. Now's the shift. And he's going to throw it to one of those big guys if he can find him. Now he's trying to run. Now he throws. A fierce collision in the end zone, and the pass is incomplete. He threw the ball for Brett Pierce.
Phillips and Rashad Bowman just nailed him. I mean, he tattooed him, and the big guy couldn't hold on to the ball. Wow. That's when the defensive back says, hey, thanks for leading me there. That's a great hit. Here comes Oregon now with Ontario Smith moving the ball across the five out near the seven. Their 23 game home win streak at stake here. There's a more at stake than that. They're ranked fifth in the country. Stay with the ground game. Smith tops it out. Out to the 28 yard line. First down, Oregon. Keith, you're talking about what's at stake. Certainly, this is a team that still has aspirations of winning the national championship, the Pac-10 championship. They want to go unbeaten. Now, in the BCS formula, the BCS comes out Monday. They've taken out the size of the win, but they keep in the quality of the win. And beating Stanford becomes a quality win. Big time. Margin of victory has been removed, and I think that's a good thing. But this is a quality win if they go on to take it. Here's Ontario Smith. He's in there for three yards. Auburn almost got it today from Louisiana Tech. They finally won an overtime. Second down, seven. This is Maurice Morris trying to get to the corner. And he does, but not enough to get to the first down marker and it was Marcus Hoover that chased him to the boundary. It'll be third down and a short three. They've got three wide outs pitch at the bottom of your picture there. So Harrington's looking to put it up here and does very quickly and the ball is off the hand of Keenan Howard. Thrown hard and thrown a little low and they don't get the first down. Special teams is a difference last week for Stanford, too, wasn't it? Blocked it again. Stanford has the ball down inside the 20 yard line. Wow. Second possession in a row that Stanford has blocked the punt. Could have been Amon Gordon. Keith, what they did is they overload this side, they overload this side. So you think the pressure's coming here, but watch. Straight up the middle is where the block comes from because they all fan out to get the overloads. Most blocks come from the outside. This one Gordon. right up the middle. There's Gordon, 18, and another big play by the Stanford special teams. First down at the Oregon 19 yard line for the Cardinal. Very much alive. Chris Lewis back getting pressure, throws and complete penalty flag. First and 15 for Stanford. Lewis puts it up. He's got a shot at it. Touchdown. Luke Powell. Perfect pass that time. And if you look at the way he delivered it, Keith, he was set. He was balanced. He was pointing in that direction. Everything was perfect. And he's certainly capable. Luke Powell using the speed to separate. And the ball was perfectly thrown to him. Now watch him this time. He sets, he locates, he throws perfect. That's balance, that's rhythm. The point, big, big point. Good. So Stanford miss the opportunity on the last block punt. This time they cash it in. And we've got a seven point difference. 42 35 Ducks. They're going to kick it off to Oregon now. The Oregon offense hasn't generated a whole lot lately. Had some Parker opportunities, but they get to a certain point and they stopped. Good. With 9 09 to play in the ball game, it's 42 35. Vaselli will kick it off. Ontario Smith, number two, waiting for it. Side. Stanford got it at the 40 yard line. Stanford has the ball. Brandon Royster, it looked like, tracked it down and caught it on the fly. So they go onside kick and get the ball. That's one of the best designed onside kicks I think I've ever seen. 
Colin Branch was the man that tracked it down. Number 20, Colin Branch. Watch this. He's got to go 10 yards. Guys are just sprinting down there. He puts it high, 10 yards. They never break stride like a pass. And here's Stanford at the Oregon 40 yard line, a seven point ball game. Look out! Lewis to Brian Allen. Back it goes to Allen. Allen running for the corner. Has a first down. Bowman comes across, tried to Brian lay Allen the body on him and missed him. But it is a first down. And Brian Allen in two carries picks up 11 yards. Brian Allen to me more looks more explosive this year came into this game with 500 all purpose yards and he's just running with more authority. Well just inside the 30 Oregon 30. Allen into the middle. And uh, Mallard has him and to knock him down. And there's a gain of about three yards on the play. <laughs> Throwing. Johnson. Three dots. Fumble the ball. Gets it back. Bounce right back to him. And it's first and goal, Stanford. I don't know if Billy Diedrich talked to. Chris Lewis or not but in the last three passes he's been setting that back back foot pointing in the direction where he's throwing here's your mismatch top of the screen this is Teo Johnson who has four catches now he's six seven put it up high let him go after it he can out jump both Bowman and Smith but he's got to hold on to the ball he's got to take care of it lucky actually gained a yard yep it's first and goal Stanford at the Oregon five yard line a lot of time left Stanford doesn't need to hurry. They give it to Carter. And the penetration by Steve Smith to spill him. And Smith gets up very gingerly. It is second down and goal from outside the five. Smith, Lewis rolls. Moretti missed him, and they stuck. Chris Lewis at about the two. Boy, that was a good hit. It was Wes Mallard who came in and stopped him as he was diving to the goal line. This will bring up third down, but watch this. Lewis says, I'm going to go up and over him to score this touchdown. And they said, no, you're not. Kevin Mitchell was there to help. And put it on the three, three-yard line where it is third down and goal. Keith, I'd give it to Carter both times, and I'd, I'd take it right off tackle. Here is the ultimate test of will right here. Strength of formation is to the bottom here with two tight ends. Carter. Not in. Maybe six inches short. They put two tight ends there. They loaded up. They tried to overload and overpower. He got right up to the goal line. This is one of those plays you don't want to take a step backwards away from the line of scrimmage. You want the quarterback to tuck up underneath the center and just follow him into the end zone. This is for the tie or the lead. And he's in there. How about Touchdown, that? Stanford. He just hooked on to big old Casey Moore and rode him in. Partner, that is a big time man's drive. Just using that offensive line to overpower the Oregon defense. They're going to go for one at 532 to play in the game. Low snap. It is. Go, go. Partially.
Beautifully blocked. It was a low snap. The hole got it down, but not well enough. And somebody got a hand on it. And Oregon leads 42-41. Forty two forty one as Seth McEwen gets a hand on the place kick for the extra point looked like the snap was good the hold was bobbled just threw him off slightly the kick was low McEwen went high he got the left hand on it what a difference that makes the kick off his feet back to the five yard line and the return by Sammy Parker. He tried to break out of the pile and find some daylight, and then he is just wiped out at about the 22-23. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Dell, enterprise solutions that are easy to build and easy to own. Easy as Dell. Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. And Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. All right, there's Seth on the bench after his moment of heroism. And here's Joey Harrington quickly to Keenan Howry. And Howry is grabbed instantly by Reuben Carter. Harrington gives to Morris, and Morris will get a yard, and that's all. Stanford very difficult to run against. It's going to be third down and two. Yeah, but you never know. It's definitely going to be a run when it is short yardage like this. I mean, Oregon will pass almost half the time, but it's like basketball on grass. Ball control, possession time attack. They'll throw for short yardage as many times as they'll run for short yardage. Point is, if they want to keep it, they better get it. They're going to call it one yard, but that's the longest one yard I've ever seen. It's much closer to two. Pressure coming. Harrington is hit as he throws. Intercepted. It's intercepted. Harrington hit as he threw. Marcus Hoover comes up with the ball. And it was Tank Williams who was heating him up. So once again, it's Tank Williams at the core of a great defensive play by Stanford. Yep. And now the Cardinal have a chance to win this ball game. Keith, that's another great call by the defensive coaches. Kent Bear, that was a, a zone blitz. You bring your safety, as you said, so you take your big tight uh, defensive end and you drop him off in pass coverage, and he gets the interception. Here's 92. He's 6'4, 270 in pass coverage on the zone blitz. First down, they give the ball to Kerry Carter. They need to pick up a first down to give Baselli a real good shot at a field goal. Pretty good yardage. They get a few on that play, but what a game Eric Heitman, the left guard, is playing. They're pulling him, they're getting him out in front of the ball carriers. He's taking out linebackers, he's overpowering defensive linemen. Terrific game by Eric Heitman. All is on the 31 yard line now. Second down and eight for Stanford. Chris Lewis quickly outside the tail Johnson they're jumping two guys bring him down and he's short of the first down. Carter. Pure power first down Stanford. And look who they followed again Eric Heitman big number 75. Here's Heitman right here. Now watch this offensive line and how they shield off, block off, pull Heitman, get his block, and turn him up inside. It doesn't get any better than that. They're missing Steve Smith, remember. But he now has come back. He's back. Just came back. He's got Luke Powell, and Kerry Carter is taken down at about the 22-yard line. Now Mike Baselli gets up to warm up. And special teams with two block punts. 
Keep in mind you're down one. You're already in field goal range. Protect the football. Second down and ten from the 20. Lewis is going to throw it. It is completed down inside the 10 yard line, but oh my goodness, Luke Powell comes up with the catch. And the hearts of the Stanford faithful had to stop for a moment there. Chris Lewis throwing on balance. He's setting on the back foot. And since he's been doing this, he's five for five. Tremendous difference in the way he's been throwing over the last five passes. But look at Luke Powell, 5'8", going up to get it. And it's first down and goal for Stanford. Give it to Carter to the four-yard line with a minute and 27 seconds and the clock running. Now Oregon spends another timeout to stop the clock. Now they're down in there where it's nothing more than uh, a chip shot like kicking an extra point or the field goal to possibly win. But the way this game is gone yeah, you got to show me no time on the clock to say it's over. Keep in mind the, uh, the last kick was blocked. Now you've got 125 you want to get off that clock you've got your offensive line now cannot be playing any better it's an outstanding offensive line just keep jamming it in there protect the ball. Oregon has one timeout remaining. Stanford two. On the four yard line now. Stanford trail 42 28 as we started the final quarter. And they're now trailing by one. It's Carter. The Ducks take him down at the three with Moretti, the main man on the defensive play, number 44. But you see what he did, very smart, and I'm sure they got this on the sidelines during that timeout. He ran right to the middle of the field. Ducks have just spent their final timeout now with a minute and 15 seconds to play in the game. Third down and goal for Stanford from the three. Third. I can't help that. Well, you've heard of that old child's game, money, marbles, and chalk. If you want to see it with the big boys play, this is it. Third down and goal from the three yard line. They give the ball to the big back, Carter. Stop. Touchdown. Oh. He rolls in. They give him the forward motion, and he's over the goal line for the touchdown. It looked for all the world like they had him, but as he turned, he fell forward, and the linesman on this side raised the arms. Touchdown. That is the fourth rushing touchdown by Kerry Carter today. And a remarkable comeback by the Stanford Cardinal. Well, they pull Heitman again. They get him out in front. Then you get the block from Casey Moore, the fullback. Now watch the extra effort of Carter as Keith said, just kept driving, pulling and spinning and turning, and the ball breaks the plane. It looked like Matt Wright, the tight end, actually pulled him in. Great effort. Tyrone Willingham says, come on, we still have plenty of play here. One minute, 10 seconds to go. This isn't over. 47-42. And the indication seems to be that Stanford will go for two. Well, the last time they played each other, they had 91. <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> Stanford going for the two-point conversion. Stanford's really been left-handed here. They've been following Heitman on the left side. <laughs> Lewis throwing. Throwing. For Johnson. And he got it. He went against Bowman and just simply again outsized him, out jumped him, and made the reception. And it's a seven point Stanford lead with a minute and 10 seconds to play. 
The Oregon Ducks will get the ball. They have no times out remaining. Partner, you've been around this game so long, you could not be more correct. It's just a jump ball. Nothing fancy to it. They're just saying, Tao, we're coming your way. You're 6'7", and he's not. He is just 5'8". If you can't out jump him, shame on you. Lewis, put the ball high, let him go get it. And that's what they did, and it worked. Tyrone just very composed. Very confident last night when we talked to him. When he got down by 14 here this afternoon, he didn't panic. All right, Joey Harrington is known around these parts as Captain Comeback. Eight times in his career here at Oregon, he's come back late in the game, the fourth quarter to win. Let's see how Stanford decides to handle the kick. Scrib it, bounce it along the ground, put a lot of air under it. Sammy Parker's waiting for Oregon. And Baselli hits it just as hard as he could. Hammers it all the way down to the five yard line. It goes to Ontario Smith, the tailback. And Ontario Smith comes up the field and to the 28 yard line. And I'll bet we've got some more news about Penn State and Northwestern from John Saunders. All right, John, thank you. Now here's Oregon with 106 remaining and no times out to work with. Three wide outs. Stanford coming. Harrington gets it away down the middle and intended for Justin Peel and defended on the play by Simba Hodari. It's just the streak. Hodari never even saw the ball coming when he turned his head. The ball hit him in the face mask. Here's your tight end. He's just going to run the streak. And here's 45 101. Get in his hip pocket, run with him. Now watch the head of 45 and White just turn back and catch the ball in the ear hole. Doesn't make any difference. He stopped the play from being successful. That's right. He doesn't mind a little ringing in the ears. Here's Harrington rolling out, looking. Goes to the sidelines. Pass is caught by Sammy Parker and thrown out of bounds. At midfield, 56 seconds remaining. Jason White's a senior. He made the tackle, and in doing that, his momentum took him out of bounds. Coach is yelling at him, say, try to keep him in bounds. 56 seconds left. No timeouts. We don't want them to stop the clock. Hold your breath. Captain Comeback is in rhythm, isn't he? Yep. Jason Willis is the man at the top of the screen now. He's the burner. Keenan Howard is up there with him. Harrington's pass is down the middle again. Oh, ten. Intended for the tight end Peel. And again, Hodari is in the way. But you know, that time Tank Williams was playing center field. He was at free safety, number 13, and he almost had the interception. This was almost the end of the game right here. As he releases it, he looks for Peel. There's your coverage. Now here comes Tank. And Tank had the ball and just couldn't hold on. Second down and 10 from midfield. 53 seconds. Boy, that was almost Katie bar the door. Yep. Right here. Tackle is made on the catch by Howry. They keep him in bounds and the clock is running. Clock will stop if they get a first down. But it is down to 39 seconds now. Keenan Howry's got to get over in position. Joey thinks they've got a timeout. No, I don't know. No, he's trying to get everybody in shape. And drops back quickly. Throws underneath for the first down. Gets it to the tight end field. That will stop the clock at 24 seconds to play of the game. So they move the chain. As soon as the ball is put back in play, when the chains are set, the clock will start. Harrington gets everybody up there and is calling the play right now. As soon as that whistle blows, he's got to get the snap. Blitz coming. Harrington gets his pass away, and it is on the hands of Howie, but he can't reel it in. And Harrington threw that ball as he was falling because Coy Wire had blitzed him and had a hold of him. You can talk about Harrington's size. You can talk about his ability, but I'm telling you, this kid has a huge heart. Watch the effort here. They come with a blitz. Here's Wire spins off of him, but even when he's wrapped up and going down, he throws a pass that was almost complete to Keenan Howry. 14 seconds to play. Howie has 338 all-purpose yards. That ties the record set by Ahmad Rashad when he played here at Oregon. Ball's in the air. 
And it is incomplete. And a lot of bumping and shoving going on between Reuben Carter and Jason Willis. And the pass is incomplete with eight seconds remaining. That's right, Keith. The first down means nothing now. It doesn't matter if it stops the clock or now. They're down to two plays max, probably one, depending on where the play is stopped. 49-42, Stanford with a seven-point lead. All he has left now is one shot, maybe two, into the end zone. But they've got to get to the end zone with eight ticks left. Remember, Oregon led when we started the fourth quarter, 42-28. To the sidelines. Too high. Too high for Jason Willis. He burned it. And the ball sailed on him a little bit. And now you're down to one. And Auction Stadium is as quiet as you will ever hear it. The loudest stadium in the country, perhaps, has now sounds like a library. 23 game home winning streak. Laying right here. Here's your Hail Mary. Beyond the field of play, the ball game is over. Stanford has defeated Oregon 49 42 and breaks the Ducks' 20 game, 23 game home winning streak. Wow, what an effort. Our Chevy players of the game, Tank Williams for Stanford, seven tackles, interception for Oregon. Keenan Howry, 338 all-purpose yards. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet making a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And once again, our final score, Stanford coming from 14 down in the final quarter to beat Oregon 49-42 at Oregon's first loss. Now let's send it to John Saunders and Terry Bowden back in Times Square Stadium.